In this video, you're going to learn about how to work with exponential growth functions and exponential decay functions, and more specifically, how to rewrite these equations into that exponential uh, function form so that we can identify the percent rate of increase or the percent rate of decrease. So before we dive into these couple examples here, just a quick refresher, y equals a times the quantity 1 plus r to the t is our exponential growth function y equals a times the quantity one minus r to the t, that's our exponential decay function. And just remember that a here represents the initial amount or the starting amount, whereas the r represents the percent rate of increase or percent rate of decrease as a decimal. So you're gonna to have to convert that percent to a decimal. t is the time, and then y is gonna be the ending amount. Now, when you look at this whole quantity here, y minus r, or one, one uh, I'm sorry, one minus r or one plus r, the one represents like 100%, like the original amount. And plus r means like how much more than 100%, and one minus r, that r is gonna be how much less than 100%, but the one is like the original amount. And when you think of that one plus r, that's the growth factor, so that's what you're multiplying by each time. One minus r is like your decay factor, which you're multiplying by each time. So let's go through a couple examples and let's talk about how to rewrite these so that they match these forms here. So in this first example, what you can see is we've got this 0.75 to the 4t, not to the 1t. So how can we rewrite that? Well, we're gonna use our rules of exponents and the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna say 0.75 to the fourth all raised to the t power. Because remember, when you have a power to a power or an exponent raised to another exponent, what do you do? You multiply those exponents and that's gonna give us back our original equation. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what is this 0.75 to the fourth power? So let's go ahead and do that in the calculator. 0.75 to the fourth, I'm getting 0.32. I'm rounding a little bit here. So this is 0.32, check my work if you'd like, and then now what you can see is we have in our exponential form here, you can see this base, okay, is 0.32. Now 0.32 is less than one, which we know this is gonna be an exponential decay function. The question is, is how much less than one is it? Well, you could rewrite this further by saying 0.32 is one minus 0.68. And so now it matches this form right here. We can see that 50 is our initial amount and 0.68 is gonna be our rate of decay. And I'm just gonna take that 0.68 and move that decimal two places to the right to convert this to a percentage. And you can see that it's a 68% rate of decay. Let's look at another example. So number two, this one's slightly different. We've got y equals 100 times the quantity 1.45 to the t minus three power. Again, it's not matching one of these two exponential functions. So how can we rewrite it so it looks a little bit more closely like, like one of those there? Well, what I'm gonna do is, again, using the rules of exponents, 1.45 to the t times 1.45 to the negative third. Because remember, with the rules of exponents, when you're multiplying and the bases are the same, what do you do to the exponents? You add them, right? So in this case, it's t plus negative three, which is the same as t minus three. So we just rewrote it a little bit. Now I'm gonna to go to the calculator here and figure out what 1.45 to the negative third power is, and I'm getting 0.33 approximately. I'm gonna multiply that by 100. Now the reason that I can do this is because, see how all three of these groups are multiplied together? Multiplication is commutative, you can change the order. So if we multiply 100 times 0.33, that's gonna give us 33, 1.45 to the t power, okay? Now, when you look at this, we can rewrite this further as one plus 0.45 to the t, and now it looks very, much like this first exponential function. 33 is our A value, that's gonna be our uh, starting amount or our initial amount. The one represents 100% like we talked about. And the 0.45, that's gonna be our rate, okay, in this case our rate of increase. But let's go ahead and convert that to a percentage by moving the decimal two places to the right. So that's actually a 45% rate of increase. So great job, I hope that helps you to understand how to rewrite these into this 
form here. I'll put a link, uh, a video on the screen here that you can take a look at talking more about how to work with exponential growth functions and exponential decay functions. Follow me over to that video and we'll do some more practice.